Thank you so much for logging on to the first ever Trick or Treat for UNICEF webcast. What cities and countries is everyone from today? Let's check. Got some of you are from Guatemala. What's up? I got some from Sweden. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. I have been so lucky to work with UNICEF over the past year, learning about the work they're doing and the needs of kids all over the world. Today, I'm really excited to be able to share what I've learned with all of you. As a lot of you know, last year I was the trick-or-treat for UNICEF spokesperson. When UNICEF asked me to be the spokesperson again this year, I couldn't wait to get started. How many of you already have your trick-or-treat box and planned to trick-or-treat for UNICEF this year? Let's see. You are, Jessica is, Laura is. Awesome! That's so cool that so many of you, you guys are involved. That means a lot to me, so thank you. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Trick or Treat campaign, let me tell you a little bit about it. Trick or Treat for UNICEF was started in 1950 by a group of kids in Philadelphia who wanted to help kids in Europe that were affected by World War II. So they decorated milk cartons and went out to Trick or Treat for UNICEF. The first year, they raised about $17. Since then, Trick or Treat for UNICEF has raised more than $140 million. So, if you haven't already gotten a box, don't worry, you can still participate. Go to www.unicefusa.org slash trick or treat. There are cool canister wraps you can print out and tape to an old coffee can, just like the original trick or treaters did. The thing I love most about Trick or Treat for UNICEF is that it was created by kids for kids. Now we all know that Trick or Treat for UNICEF supports UNICEF, but does anyone know what UNICEF does? Let's see. You, kid, they help kids. Yes, you're right. They do. I know it's for. Yes, it is for. It is for kids. They've been around for a very long time. Yes, they have. Wow, I'm very.